The drive on the 101 could get even more scenic. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carla Cicchetto. City planners are at a meeting that's just starting right now to discuss the South Carlsbad Coastline Project, which aims to transform 60 acres of city-owned land along the Coast Highway. News 8's Brian White has more on the long-term vision for this beautiful stretch of coastline. City planners in Carlsbad are envisioning a coastline where the 101 or Carlsbad Boulevard here is moved further east to open up this area and give people more direct access to the coastline. Guarding the coastline against cliff erosion is an ongoing effort for this area of South Carlsbad. With sea level rise, we really want to move infrastructure away from the coast. In May of 2020, the city of Carlsbad acquired grant funding of over $500,000 from the California State Coastal Conservancy to design a plan that would increase resilience to rising sea levels, which would involve relocating South Carlsbad Boulevard further away from the coastline. We want to create more space for people, move the road over to the east a little little bit and you would free up like 60 acres worth of land. Christina Ray works for the city of Carlsbad and she's excited at what the future holds for this three mile stretch from Palomar Airport Road down to La Costa Avenue. No one wants to walk in the bike lane with cars whizzing by. Like what if this whole area had wide bike lanes? What if there was a bike lane for long distance cyclists and a different bike lane for people with beach cruisers. She points to this little parklet at the foot of Pine Avenue to the north as an example of what could be done with a half acre of space, let alone the 60 acres they hope to free up further south. We really want to start with like, what's the overall vision? Let people imagine what they want this space to be. Plenty of people walk and bike alongside the 101 every day. And at some points along the way, there isn't a whole lot of room between the road and the cliffside. Ann Stogner likes the idea of expanded walk Ways. There's many, many people that walk this every day, and uh, I think that'd be a lot, everybody feel a lot more secure. And others who feel differently want to keep things the way they are. This area right here is known to all the locals. This is one of the last parts left. Leave this alone. The design phase for this project should take about a year, and at that point, they'll be able to estimate the overall cost of construction and look for more funding. This will be a success if people in Carlsbad are like, yeah, that feels like our city. And if you'd like to give input on this project and what you'd like to see for this area, just go to our website and click on the story, and you'll have the city's link for public input. Thanks, Brian. The city of San Diego started working today to clear an encampment that's been growing in the Midway District. Nearly 200 people have been living in the encampment on Sports Arena Boulevard. Mayor Todd Gloria says it has become a public health concern. Homeless advocates say something needs to be done to address the root cause of the homelessness crisis. We have to get some leadership on this. We have to get some real coordinated effort. Otherwise, quite honestly, it, every month we're just going to be back out here talking about the same stuff, about the same people moving over here, back to there, and still more and more people on the street. Crews cleared one side of the street today and will continue cleaning up through the rest of the week. children younger than five years old could soon be eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine. This afternoon, Pfizer asked the FDA for emergency use authorization. It is a two-dose vaccine for children ages six months to five years old. The vaccine could be available by the end of the month. CBS 8 Steve Price is hearing from local parents and physicians about the impact on kids and what it means for the future of the pandemic. Generally speaking, children don't seem to get as sick from COVID-19 as adults. That said, doctors here do make it clear that there are children being treated in the hospital right now for COVID-19. So they are pleased to hear that the vaccine may soon open up to more age groups. <laughs> Roxy's good at disappearing, but kids can't hide from COVID. Now comes word that Pfizer is seeking emergency authorization to approve its vaccine for children between six months and four years old. I'm really happy that it's going to happen, but I'm not going to have her be the first in line. Bye. Nikki Carson has concerns because Roxy is only two years old, still has a lot of growing to do, and relatively speaking, the vaccine is pretty new. There's no way to know long term until it's been long term. We have so much experience immunizing babies starting at birth. Dr. Mark Sawyer is an infectious disease specialist who says they're actually seeing less side effects in children under 12 than in those 13 and older. 
And he adds little kids aren't great at wearing masks, so the vaccine is really their only line of defense. Pediatricians uh, appreciate the value of the vaccine and when they do the calculation of the risk of the vaccine versus the risk of the disease, you decide to use the vaccine because it prevents much more, many more problems than it causes. Smile. <laughs> Rowan's mom agrees, especially since her husband is immunocompromised and she sees another positive. She'll feel safer letting her two year old play with other kids, getting much needed socialization. The awkward stages are easier to manage when they have other kids to feed off of. The first shots could start before the end of the month, and Dr. Sawyer makes it clear it's a much smaller dose than adults get, one-tenth the size. And while the emergency authorization applied for Tuesday is for two shots, he believes a third may eventually be needed. But Rowan's mom says she'll do whatever doctors recommend, trusting the science, because if she doesn't and he ends up hospitalized from COVID, she'll never forgive herself. I feel just devastated and feel so responsible for it being my fault and that mom guilt is, is real. Steve Price, CBS 8. Thanks, Steve. New COVID cases in San Diego are up slightly over yesterday, but still much lower than just a week ago. County health officials are reporting 2,400 new cases. 24 more deaths brings the total to 4,710. State data shows hospitalizations have dropped by 22 to 1,158. Three more patients were added to the ICU for a total of 214. Modeling by Scripps Health suggests that the current Omicron-driven surge should wind down by next month. Four people, including a juvenile, are under arrest tonight in connection with a drive-by shooting that killed a 14-year-old boy in Mount Hope yesterday. It happened on Mount Hope Drive on J Street near the 36th Street intersection. The teen died at the hospital. A 19-year-old man, two 18-year-old men, and a 17-year-old boy were arrested. A motive is not known at this point, but investigators say there may have been a fight between the victim and the suspects earlier in the day. All four are facing murder charges. California is moving ahead with a plan to shut down death row. Condemned inmates will be moved to general prisons where they can work to help pay back victims' families. Our political reporter spoke with the mother of a victim in a local high-profile child murder case. She has more on what Melina Phillips is saying about the decision to move convicted killers off death row. In a way, she feels like this is a joke. There hasn't been an execution in California since 2006, and now to take away death row, she says it's going to take away the deterrent altogether. But I also spoke to someone who works inside of San Quentin, and she told me that if the death row were really a deterrent, well, there wouldn't be any more murder. 29 years ago feels like a lifetime to Melina Phillips. Well, I still hear his voice talking to me. Um, call me mom. 29 years ago also feels like just yesterday since her nine year old son Jonathan Sellers and his friend Charlie Kiever were brutally raped and murdered. It doesn't feel like it's been 30 years since I've seen him, since I've kissed him, since I held him um, because he's so much a part of me, so much in my heart. For 29 years, she said her son's convicted serial rapist and killer feared death row more than death itself. He did not want to go to death row, though he himself administered death to so many people. What she says is a deterrent to many criminals. The isolation on death row is what the California District Attorney's Association Chief Executive Officer Greg Todden says is seen as a privilege in the eyes of the state. Personal cells. There are a variety of privileges and uh, procedures that are in place there that that are costly to administer for prison officials. At a press conference on Monday, Governor Gavin Newsom reiterated that he is against the death penalty and transferring inmates to general prisons will help them work and pay back restitutions to victims' families, part of Proposition 66 that voters passed in 2016 to make sure the death penalty stayed in place with reforms. They're not going to make money to give real restitution, so it's, it's a joke. 
In a way, Melina says this is not her fight anymore. Her son's killer died in 2020 because of COVID. Now she fully admits that there may be innocent people on death row and that there are definitely racial inequalities. But she says in a case like her son's where the evidence is as clear as day, death row should remain. All right, Morgan, thanks. A former lecturer at UCLA is under arrest tonight in Colorado after the discovery of a threatening video and violent 800 page manifesto. UCLA even moved all classes to virtual learning today. Officials say the manifesto referenced a mass shooting and threatened philosophy department members. 31 year old Matthew Harris was tracked down this morning to an apartment building in Boulder. Police there also evacuated a nearby elementary school and some buildings at the nearby University of Colorado. Harris was taken into custody after a brief standoff. San Diego County's second Live Well on Wheels bus made its debut today. The mobile office hit the road and will connect communities across San Diego with important health services. The bus is fully equipped with resources from health screenings to disaster response services. Last year, Live Well on Wheels served nearly 23,000 people at more than 200 community events. It is now official. Tom Brady is retiring after 22 years in the NFL. He made the announcement on social media this morning. In his 22 seasons, Brady threw for a record 624 touchdowns and 84,000 yards. But his most impressive record is seven Super Bowl wins, which is one more than the record for the two top teams in the league. Both the Steelers and Patriots have six wins, and he helped lead the Patriots to those six wins. Our John Howard will have reaction to the news later in sports. A lot of sad people out there. We were hoping after he made his comments yesterday, maybe he will stay. It's going to be a long time before anybody catches those Three numbers. People wrong.